Welcome back to this course. Uh, today we are going to start uh, our first lecture on uh, reliability index. Till date we have discussed theory of probability and different mathematical models that we are going to use in reliability based structural design uh, to um, model the uncertainty associated with this design process. Now, when we uh, design a structure, uh, we actually make sure that the capacity at the section level is more than the demand. So, that is the basic philosophy we always follow to ensure safety, serviceability and of course, under the complete design process, we also ensure uh, the economy associated with the uh, design and construction. Now, in this framework where we play with capacity and demand, we actually look at non-dimensional number as you can see on your screen. This number we call factor of safety and if this number is more than 1, then obviously we have reserve strength to deal with any demand arising from the external or maybe sometimes internal also sources. So, when we adopt this safety based design, then uh, we normally uh, do it in the deterministic framework. And then in that process from our experience, we have seen that if two structures they are designed based on this approach and having same factor of safety because they are coming from the same design process and if we construct two identical structure, then they offer different level of reliability or probability of failure and it is also vice versa. Now, the question is why that occurs and that actually motivates us to uh, move further to include uncertainty within the design process. Now, when we talk about capacity and demand, individually both capacity and demand they are function of different variables involving geometry, material, boundary conditions, then external loads, sometimes internal loads also and various other factors. Let us take an example, if we design a portal frame, you can see on your screen and this is for the moment it is exposed to the self weight which acts as an UDL over the beam. Now, that load is actually transferred through column and ultimately goes to the foundation. Now, when we design this structure, we first start with say the typical bending moment diagram of this structure looks like this and then at different sections, we have the bending moment that we expect from the given load and then we select the cross section and material property in such a way that at the extreme fiber level, the stress developed either tension or compression the material is sufficient enough to withstand that stress level. So, that is the basic structural framework that we often adopt. Now, when we extend that framework to structural reliability, we actually try to assimilate the stochastic description of all these variables and hence it is more precise. It is of course, consistent because this uncertainty that we try to incorporate in this design framework comes from some practical source. For example, if we take a RC structure, then we take the samples of concrete, we test it, we have already discussed that how to fit a distribution and then from that information, we actually try to model its impact on the response of the structures and then finally, on the design output. Now, to achieve this goal, we actually address uh, through failure probability and we know the 1 minus failure probability is actually the reliability of the structure. Now, for non-routine cases where the conventional framework, design framework face difficulty, for example, under seismic loading which is random in nature, not always deterministic framework is uh, sufficient enough to address the problem on hand and that is the reason we move towards this structural reliability based approach. Now, this is a safety checking format. It has actually different levels. It has three levels. The first one is of again the partial safety factor based approach that we often encounter through our design guidelines. In this approach, we apply uh, load factors as well as some factors associated with the material strength. In general, 
we overestimate load through these factors and underestimate the strength and that is how we try to ensure the factor of safety more than 1. And assuming that the reserve strength that we have through this process will meet the uncertainty associated with the structure when it is exposed to its original environment. Now, the second level or level 2 is where we find out the reliability of the structure at the component level. For that, we define certain limit states and through these limit states, again we quantify the capacity and demand and then we model uncertainty more precisely compared to level 1. Now, obviously in this process, we focus our attention at some structural components. So, for example, if you have a structure, we split it into slab, beam, column and footing and then each component we design in this framework considering the uncertainty associated with capacity and design. So, from the partial safety factor based approach in a deterministic framework, we go to the second level where component wise we design considering uncertainty and then in the third level, we go for a more detailed approach considering the complete structure as a whole and for that, we often go for a high fidelity models in terms of structural analysis and design and in terms of also the reliability. So, all this we will discuss one by one as we progress further in the course. So, as of now, let us focus on the level 2 reliability methods. So, for that, let us consider steel beam as you can see on your screen. So, it is a cantilever beam and it experiences a point load at the free end and the beam is defined by its geometry that is the length of the beam and the other parameters associated with the stiffness that is EI. So, for this beam, if we design at every section, let us consider the support or maybe the deformation at the free end, then of course, we have some allowable limits for that and that is the capacity we have. So long the response of the structure is well within the capacity, then our structure is safe. Now, that actually gives us uh, the mathematical framework to define what we call limit state. So, a limit state g x is nothing but the difference between capacity and demand and when this is equal to 0, it is just at the verge of failure. Just when the demand crosses the capacity, then it fails. So, if we take the limit state, in this case we consider the deformation at the free end. So, we have an allowable deformation for the timing, let us consider L by 325 is the allowable deformation. This type of limits are often specified in the codal provisions and then we apply the point load and from the structural analysis, we can find out the exact deformation at the free end. So, then using these two, we can define our limit state. Now, if we graphically present this information, so we have capacity and demand and then the blue line you can see on your screen where the g x is exactly equal to 0. So, uh, we have this x y plane or x 1 x 2 plane in this case is divided by this blue line into two region, one is safe, one is unsafe depending upon the value of g x whether it is greater than or less than 0. So, in this uh, diagram, the g x actually is perpendicular to this plane of paper and the blue line is where that surface actually meets the x1, x2 plane. Now, every point on this limit state satisfies the design criteria because it is just, I mean crossing this limit state leads to failure. Now, the question is of all these points on the limit state, which one should I use for my design purpose? Now, intuitively we can answer that question even in the deterministic framework, if I just find out all these points and then obviously, the one which is giving minimum factor of safety, obviously, I will use that information to design the structure. Now, when we extend our models from deterministic to this reliability based design, we also adopt the same approach. In this case, we consider uncertainty, but we obviously consider a point 
that offers us least probability of failure and that is the point where definitely we will put our design point. In fact, in this entire discussion, we will focus on this point how to solve this optimal point considering the uncertainty and the condition that g x will be equal to 0. So, let us see how we can quantify that design process. So, we have two parameters to play with in this case, one is capacity and other is demand. And because now we consider uncertainty, both of them are defined by their respective probability density function. As you can see on your screen, we have capacity which is marked green and the demand which is marked pink. Now, I put some numbers in the axis just to demonstrate. In this case, for the time being, let us also consider that both of them are following normal distribution. So, we have a bell shaped curve which is symmetric about this mean point. So, the mean demand in this case 25 and then mean capacity in this case 35. So, obviously, in appropriate unit. So, what we can conclude that the demand mean demand is less than mean capacity and therefore, uh, the factor of safety will be more than uh, 1. So, we expect this structure to satisfactorily behave within the deterministic framework. But as soon as we consider uncertainty, you can see the capacity and demand can take any value governed by their respective probability density function. Now, there is a situation marked by this arrow the capacity on the left hand side whenever it is taking this value because this is now uncertain is less than the demand which is marked by the pink line on the right hand side of this arrow. Now, this is the reason why even factor of safety more than 1 can lead to failure. Now, our main objective now to estimate the probability of failure associated with this design process is to quantify the area under the common area under these two curves. So, we have already discussed how to quantify PDF in two dimensions. So, we will see how we can move forward and find out the area under these two curves. So, we have this PDF of capacity and demand. Now, what we first consider, let us look at the demand curve and then we try to find out what is the probability that small d will fall in this region marked A1 that is from d to d plus the differential increment dd. So, that we can easily find out from the PDF ordinate. So, we have f d of d multiplied by the incremental area that gives this vertical marked area A1. Now, we are interested to find out the probability that C the capacity will be greater than D. So, now from this first expression we get the probability that D that is the demand will be within this differential area. Now, what is the probability that capacity will be more than this D value? We can easily find out from the PDF of capacity. So, we integrate from d to positive infinity f c of c and then we mark it the area a 2. Now, if we find out the reliability where c is always greater than d and we mark that reliability as d r will be the product of a 1 and a 2 that is the two area we have already find out. So, the product of these two we can write down from the expression of a 1 a 2 and then if we integrate this d r over the suitable limits and then we can find out the reliability associated with this design process. So, in this derivation what we finally see is reliability of the design is governed by the two probability density functions associated with capacity and demand where we assume that both of them C and D are uncorrelated in this process. 
Now obviously, if we find out the probability of failure, it is nothing but 1 minus reliability and then we can further simplify the expression and ultimately what we get the probability of failure where capacity is less than the demand is integration from minus infinity to plus infinity then small f d of d times capital F c of d dc. So, now we have assumed that capacity and demand they are independent because otherwise we have to define the joint distribution and in general we always have marginals because all the parameters are defined by their respective probability density function we do not have joint distributions readily available. We need to estimate the joint distributions from their marginals. Particularly for complex structures, for example, if you consider a finite element of a complex building, not a kind of simple structure like a cantilever beam. In these case, mostly the gx that you get from the response of a finite element, they do not have some explicit form. So, in this case, estimating in fact the density functions representing capacity and demand that itself is a challenging task and therefore, the model we have derived just now, although very simple in terms of its mathematical expression, but at times it is very difficult to find out these two single distribution describing the capacity and demand and that motivates us to find out some alternate way. For that, let us again use the algebra of variance that we have already discussed. Now, any g x we have, we can expand it using Taylor series expansion which we have already covered in our theory of probability. Now, in this process what we do, we consider a reference point and with respect to that reference point, we expand the function which is an infinite series as you can see on your screen and then we retain first two terms and then apply the expectation operator. So, without loss of generality, we can consider mean as the reference point because any random variable will have a central tendency around mean and therefore, we can actually consider mean as my reference point and then we have derived expression for the first two moments. So, if we adopt that algebra of variance in case of limit state, we can estimate mean of g which is the expectation of g x. This is approximately equal to the same limit state evaluated at the respective mean point. And then we can also find out the variance and this involves the first differential of g with respect to x i evaluated at the main point and then obviously, if two random variables are correlated, we have covariance and when i equal to g obviously, this will lead to variance. Now, this gives some idea about how to evaluate the first two moments when we define a limit state and obviously, in this case, it gives us hope because just by looking at these two expressions of mu g and sigma g, we can expect these expressions we can evaluate for the structures either at the component level or at the global level, it is possible. Now, when we identify the first two moments and for the time being, let us assume the shape of this curve as you can see the pink line and let it be normal for the time being. Then we know the PDF of the limit state and then obviously, the probability of failure will correspond to the region where this g is less than 0. That means, uh, if we integrate this function from negative infinity up to 0, we get the area under this curve on the left hand side of 0 and that corresponds to the failure associated with this problem. So, for the timing, let us assume both capacity and demand are following normal distribution and obviously, with mu c and sigma c are the two parameters for capacity and mu d and sigma d are the two parameters for demand. Now then, as I have already explained, the failure will be governed by the area on the left hand side of this arrow at uh, g equal to 0. 
Now obviously under this assumption when g x equal to c minus d obviously g x is also normal and that is the reason we have drawn this bell shaped curve on your screen. And then we can evaluate what is mu g and sigma g from these two expressions if they are uncorrelated and obviously if they are correlated also we can estimate the first two moments using variance algebra. Then once mu g and sigma g are estimated then we can write down the expression for pdf of g obviously being normal the expression goes like this uh, as you can see on your screen again governed by the first two moments mu g and sigma g square. And then p f is integration from minus infinity to 0 the p d f and it gives the area on the left hand side of this black arrow. And from this p f we can estimate what is the reliability associated with this design as reliability is 1 minus p f. So, it gives us an impression that solution in this case is possible and that we can investigate further and we will solve some example. Now, let us see graphically what does it mean by this model. So, we have defined our capacity and demand in terms of mu c and sigma c and mu d and sigma d both of them are normal obviously the limit state we have g x equal to 0 this g is also normal and uh, hence we get this curve on your screen. So, from this curve this is the mean point and at 0 this vertical line dotted line marks the boundary that divides the safe and failure region. So, anything on the right hand side is safe region and on the left of this vertical line is the failure region. And then the distance from this vertical line to the mean point let us for the time being define it as beta times sigma g that we can do where uh, we have already figured out what should be our mu of g. Then from this graphical representations we can definitely find out the p f and then this p f because the p d f follows normal distribution we can find out the integration up to 0 point that is the dotted vertical line then it is capital phi that is the standard normal c d f of minus mu g by sigma g this we have already covered when we discussed um, definitions of random variable. Now, if you look at this expression mu g and sigma g both of them they have the same unit and therefore, the ratio of this is a non dimensional number and that is what we have marked using this quantity beta. So, obviously, p f in this case will be phi of minus beta. Now, this definition was first proposed by Cornell and hence we call it Cornell's reliability index beta which is the ratio of mu g and sigma g. So, it is a non dimensional number and once we find out this number we can correlate this number with the probability of failure using this relation phi of minus beta. It was published by C A Cornell in 1969 you can also refer to this paper for this uh, definition of reliability index. Now, if you take a problem so we have that cantilever beam and we consider the limit state where we have an allowable deformation at the free end and then we have applied deformation that we can quantify using load and geometry and material properties. So, in this case we consider three variables to be random as you can see on your screen load p then length l and Young's modulus e all of them are defined by their mean and standard deviation value. So, our objective is to find out first the reliability index and once we find out the reliability index using Cornell's definition we will find out the probability of failure associated with this process. So, again in this case we adopt variance algebra. So, that demands we have to differentiate this limit state with respect to the 
associated random variables. In this case, three random variables are there P, L and E. So, we differentiate the expression G x and we get the first differential with respect to all these variables. And then we adopt algebra of variance as you can see on your screen. Then first we find out G of mu which is the G x evaluated at the mean point. So, we put the mean values of these random variable and find out what is the G mu. And then we find out the slope of G with respect to all these random variables and then evaluate at the mean point and we find out respective slopes. Then uh, we can find out sigma G using variance algebra as you can see on your screen. And finally, once we have mu G and sigma G, we can find their ratio which is again a non-dimensional number and in this case the value is 3.9712. That is the value of beta in this case and once we have this beta, we can find out P f which is phi of minus beta and that gives us a value of 3.5756 into 10 to the power minus 5. So, we have quantified the probability of failure and from this P f we can find out the reliability associated with this design. From this expression, what we can see that earlier format based on factor of safety is now converted into a framework where we consider the moments associated with the random variable. And then from that moment, we actually figure out the first two moments of this limit state and that gives us the non-dimensional number beta we call reliability index or more precisely Cornell's reliability index. And in this process, we expand G x up to first order term using Taylor series expansion and we go up to second moment where we estimate these two moments, first moment and second moment with respect to mean and hence we call this method as mean value first order second moment method in short form MV. FOSL. Now, in reality, when we design a structure, we try to achieve a certain level of reliability. That means, we perform the reverse of what we have done. In this example, we have solved the forward problem where we have defined the limit state and the random variable which are defined in terms of their mean and standard deviation. Then we find out what is the probability of failure under this given definition. In reality, we first fix the reliability level and for that we try to design the structure in terms of its geometry material property so that it can withstand the external load as in this case the free end is exposed to a point load. And then ultimately we achieve that reliability level and thereby we select the different design parameters. So, in reality we just do the reverse. However, this framework gives us the first model how to address the design when we consider uncertainty associated with all the variables involved in this process. So, with that let us close here. In our next class, we will further study the different advantage and disadvantage of this method called MVFOSM. Thank you. So, with this let us close here. Uh, in the next class, we will discuss different advantage and disadvantage of this uh, MVFOSM. Uh, thank you.